Hello, beautiful friends. Once again, we gather here, we do this often whenever possible to share some love, a lot of love, but also to share some Ascension updates. And so I would like to start by welcoming our Divine Mother and her incredible love into all hearts that have gathered here. This Ascension process is very much about the return of the Mother. This Ascension process is about reunification the reunification of cosmic forces, the reunification of our own energies, so that we no longer are split into love and then judgment. And so I will be speaking about what just took place on the 2nd of February, and also about a gathering that took place in Sedona that participated in this incredible activation. But just because somebody was in Sedona, it doesn't mean that everybody else didn't get to experience this. So we all experience this. So our beloved Divine Mother in her beautiful form that you see here as Lakshmi, this is how she appeared to Ananda. Ananda is a musician and an incredible visionary artist. And so Divine Mother appeared to her like this and she would come every day and she wanted to be painted exactly like this. So I highly recommend getting this beautiful image and to really meditate often with this beautiful mother of love and light that we have. And so we are going through an ascension process. Um, I speak always from experience and not so much from knowledge because I find that our experience is really valuable because each one of us is a very unique instrument in the divine orchestra of creation. And so we each have an instrument, a song, a tone within us, and that needs to be expressed exactly, uniquely as it is. So, you know, we don't want to repeat somebody else's teaching so much. We want to bring our own unique tone. And so this is about the unique tone. When I first heard about Ascension, it was in the year 2006. And I was living in Germany and I was going through a lot of meditation, thousands and thousands of hours of meditation that allowed me to see also into higher realms as it happens to all of us when we still our being and we open the third eye and <laughs> most importantly, our heart through which we can start experiencing higher and higher and higher realms. And so we are beings that could be compared to an onion. And when we start meditating and we really meditate and the deep silence and deep devotion, it is a combination of loving devotion and a technique. And so some techniques are very powerful. For example, the technique that Yogananda taught us, which is really pranayama through the spine, for example, that we refer to as Kriya Yoga. Just to explain it simply, it can lead to incredible um actually liberation from these layers of the onion and then we also restructure these many different bodies that we have and when we restructure all these different subtle bodies our perception then allows us to see things at the level of i would call it divine reality and so in 2006 i for the first time heard the word aufstieg which was ascension in german and so when I heard it, I came home and I started to meditate. And I said to all the wonderful guides that I had, I said, please explain to me. I don't understand. Is it true? Is, are we going through ascension? I want to know. And then something incredible happened. I was visited by guides that have been guiding me in this lifetime since I was a little kid. And I was born in Czechoslovakia. And I always want to point that out. Because for those of you who grew up in communism like myself, we were very limited in information. <laughs> and so what we had probably was completely, you know, distorted reality. And plus we had the Iron Curtain. So libraries only had communist books and so on and so on. So you really could not know about the Hopi people. And so when I was four years old, I was visited by the Hopi grandmother. And this is not exactly what she looked like, but I was looking for some images of a Hopi grandmother. And so this Hopi grandmother, she told me that she is my grandmother. And she actually, even though I'm in the female body, said that I was her grandson and that we are Hopi people from the stars. And she gave me an amazing initiation. And so that started my journey with the Hopi people. So in 2006, 
when I asked the question, what is Ascension? I was immediately visited by my Hopi family. But this time it was not my grandmother. It was all my uncles and my brothers and my cousins. But it was all these like grandfathers, you know. And they said, well, if you want to know about Ascension, we'll have to take you beyond the Stargate. Now, I have to tell you, everything sounds like science fiction when you are in the multidimensional reality. And so they said that the Earth herself doesn't perceive um, divine reality. And that when we are here on planet Earth, we have a very limited perception of what reality really is. And so they said to be able to see the true divine reality, we have to move through an opening within the Earth that we can call an organic natural star gate. So not something like technology, like, you know, in a science fiction movie, but more like a flower. And this flower allows us to move into divine reality. So me and my Hopi family, we went through the flower that we can call a portal within the field of the earth. And when we move through this flower, through this portal, then we were able to see cosmos all at once. And we were able to see even the worlds that are not known to you know, our scientists, of course, here on planet Earth, which I think is the majority of the worlds. And I was really surprised to see that the Earth actually is part of a much larger solar system than what we know. I was surprised to see that the Earth also is part of the solar system, which is like a very big world with many different planets that we don't even know about here and many different suns. And the Hopi family showed me that in 2012, on December 21st, we will go through ascension. And that it will look like, I don't know if I have a picture here, let me just quickly look. And that it will look like as if a rainbow serpent will move through all the planets in this big world with many different planets than what we know. And it will also move as a rainbow serpent also through all the different suns and the serpent will rise. So the serpent will ascend. And so we were just standing there by this you know, stargate watching this ascension process take place. And every world within the system of the worlds was lifted up. Every planet was lifted up. The suns were lifted up. Everything was lifted up. And as it got lifted up, I first thought the serpent started to look a little bit like cosmic DNA. And then suddenly the serpent transformed and it clearly became a rainbow dragon. Now, this to me is amazing because today is a new moon. And this new moon is very, very important to our native original people. I just learned it also from the Hopi people in Arizona. They shared that this new moon is so important to them because today is the beginning of the year of a dragon. And that's rare, isn't it? And so I want to go back to this amazing story again and again because it really gave us information about what is to unfold in what we call the ascension process. That all worlds have been lifted up. When we are in this uh, divine reality, one thing I always point out is that time behaves very differently from the time here on planet Earth. And that is something we will speak about. So I received information since I was four years old from the Hopi people. And they themselves actually did not speak of themselves as Hopi people, but Hopi. And that again, you know, just shows us, of course, that, you know, in American or English pronunciation, you pronounce O as O. But in the native language originally, it didn't have that. It was more the cosmic syllables, ho, pi. And so that's the information that I received. So in 2020, when we went through this huge purification of our human genome, our human genome contains, right, the illusion of who we are not and so since 2020, we've been going through massive purification of our human genome. That means we are remembering, we are awakening, we are waking up from the illusion, 
we are reuniting with the divine truth and divine reality that exists beyond this veil that was surrounding the earth. And the veil could have only been pierced through, you know, massive amount of meditation and all this work that we have done. But now it's more and more and more unveiling. And so the unveiling here is taking place. So in 2020, I started to make videos. I would always write the script. I would hire a voice artist, you know, I put a lot of effort into it. I don't do that anymore. But I made this video and this video led me to being able to participate in this sacred ceremony on the 2nd of February in Sedona with the Hopi people. And I will explain that. But I wanted to play this video. I knew from the Hopi people that visited me in this lifetime several times that we will go through this incredible process of transformation of all life. And the prophecies of the Hopi people also aligned with what I knew. And that would be that there would be a blue star. Now, what I found so fascinating, a blue star appeared above China in 2019 in October. Now, if you have been part of the changes that we have experienced since 2019, think about the timing of this. A blue star appeared above China in October 2019. And then we had a big unfolding of purification. The purification is called by the Hopi people, the great purifier. And so I made this video and I actually have um, a photo of the blue star that appeared above China in the video. So watch with me and then I'll continue the story here. I am an elder of the Hopi tribe. I am a Hopi grandmother. My words come to you at the time of purification, before the great turning. You might remember when the third world ended in a painful deluge, painful to Mother Earth. You made a promise to the Great Spirit to come back and serve the Earth. You promised Mother Earth would never suffer such pain again. And yet her pain became unbearable once again. Once again, your civilizations misused the gift of life. Once again, the human race misused and misunderstood the gift of life force in their own bodies. The fourth world is falling apart. The blue star lit up the skies. The ether is filled with the great purifier. It is not too late to remember your promise to the great spirit to prevent another painful end of a world, the fourth world. There is a way to rise into the fifth world without causing pain to Mother Earth. Listen to my words. It is not too late. This is how. First, purify your own heart. This is where your journey begins. Your heart is a receiver of the force of creation. When your heart is pure and open, only then are you able to receive the fullness of life force flowing from the one source. Next, your heart is also a transmitter. The more you are capable of receiving, the more you can give. Give pure life force to Mother Earth. Give the energy of love to Mother Nature, to the plants, the animals, the planet, the spirits of nature. You are a receiver and a transmitter of light and love. You also have a great gift of creative imagination. All your dreams of lives are created by you. You are one of zillions of architects of what you call reality. By now, you know, there are many dream realities in the cosmic body of creation. Infinite possibilities are available to all. That is one of the purposes of all existence, to discover all that is possible in this cosmic experiment of life. All beings are dreaming their dream realities, not just here on Earth. The cosmos is filled with visible and invisible worlds and their inhabitants. I invite you to pay attention to the highest reality, the Great Spirit and Mother Nature. Activate your fullness by purifying your heart and mind. Use your gifts skillfully and wisely. Only then can you fulfill your promise to serve as an architect of the new earth. The gates of the fifth world are open now. 
May the Earth Guardians hear this call to add their rainbow light to the planetary grid of magnetic love. And so when I made this video in 2020, I got immediately contacted by a woman, her name is Marza, who is deeply connected to the Hopi people. And we have been in touch ever since. Marza uh, has an interesting story where her father in Sedona, when he was a little kid, somewhere after the year 1900, was adopted by the native people because he lost his white parents. And so he grew up with the native people. And so Marza is allowed to actually still visit with the Hopi people in a very, I would say, private way. And to also visit places on the Hopi land in Arizona that normally are not open to anyone, not to anyone who's not of the Hopi tribe. And so um, a few really days ago, before February 2nd, I was texting with Marza and she told me she is going to Sedona with a group of people where they will be meeting with the Hopi people. And it was not a public event. And she said that they have a task and the task was to activate a front door and a back door. And she gave me some more information about it. The funny thing is, if you guys know Matthias De Stefano, uh, I put his picture also in the email that I sent, that Matthias was told by his guides uh, that he had to be in Sedona to open some doors. And somehow people connected him to Marza. And so he was also invited to participate to be, uh, yeah, he has a show on Gaia. So it happened to be that we ended up both as participants of Marza's gathering with the Hopi people. And we had other native people there as well, but also Marza's students. And so I started to receive dreams and instructions about what's going to happen in Sedona. And I was visited every night before the 2nd of February by the Hopi people, mainly women. And they were giving me instructions and they were giving me a map and they were telling me about the front door, the back door and the energy. And so if you have been to Sedona, Sedona is a very hard opening portal to the new earth. Now, I have known since 2020, uh, since different information came to me from the Hopi people, that Sedona actually is exactly what it is. It's a portal, and that Sedona, if you've been, it's beautiful, but it also exists in higher realms, and we would call it the new earth. So you will find the same Sedona, but without the homes and without the infrastructure, of course, as pure nature on the new earth. So as I started to receive all the information, I was always making little drawings and I got so excited that I am actually able to participate and that Marza would take me with her to Sedona, uh, to the hidden you know, portals and to the Hopi land. So what unfolded was pretty incredible. I knew from my Hopi grandmother from the stars that the key to all things in this lifetime is to have a clean heart. Now, this is what the Hopi people actually spoke about to us as well. The clean heart versus unclean heart. Now, when I was four years old, my initiation was all about in this lifetime, we need to actually purify our hearts to once again reunite all life. The Hopi people took us to something that is, again, not open to public at all. They took us to their prophecy rock. And the prophecy rock has all the stories as uh, petroglyphs um, written onto it. And it is about what happens when the heart becomes unclean and how it leads to complete, you know, eventually destruction of a world because it leads to the distortion of human love and humanity. So they took us to these amazing places. And I wanted to point out that the Hopi people have always been guided by these supernatural beings from higher realms that they themselves call Kachinas. Now, I always thought, you know, Kachinas, they seem to have kind of like masks on their faces. But when I was in Sedona in 2021, I got actually visited by the Kachinas themselves. And again, they showed me what's happening to planet Earth. And so, you know, deep down, we have this DNA that leads us to these uh, origins. So we are always connected to our star origin. And for us, that would be the Hopi people here that I share about. And so the Kachinas have been very, very active in actually assisting the Earth to ascend. 
And so the earth has been ascending into more and more and more light. We are now in a world where we are receiving so much more light. Now I'm skipping here a little bit through the slides, so please forgive me. When the Hopi people visited me, these women, a few nights ago before going to Sedona for the second of the second, they gave me this kind of map and they asked me to draw it, so I did. So I'll explain it. <laughs> so they said there is door one, the first door, the first portal, and behind it is the second door, the second portal. And the flow between these portals, portals to the new earth, is actually only partially liberated. But in the middle, you see there was like a big chunk. I have the infinity symbol on it. And this flow has been completely frozen. So this is not the first time that we receive instructions about frozen flow, frozen energy. Same thing happened in Ohio at the Serpent Mound. And so they showed me how actually our presence will be absolutely needed. And they specifically told me several days before going to Sedona that I needed to be at the back door. And the back door is the second door. Because there was a being who has been trying to fix the second portal. And you see it needed two different fixes. It was broken in two different places. And so I spoke to the being who told me this. And it was a male being who was working in the ethers. And he's just haven't, he didn't have enough success in fixing this. But these Hopi women showed me how this can be fixed. And so I knew I have to be at the back door. But it was Marza that was deciding who's going to be at which door. It was about 34 of us in total. And so I was hoping that I'm going to be at the back door. They showed me how the flow between the two doors, actually, because it's frozen, needs to be defrosted by the fire of like the burning fire of spirit that actually can be ignited at the base of the spine if we move in the infinity symbol. Now, for you who have been you know, following these teachings for a while, you know how Divine Mother in 2020 gave us a transmission of how to activate through the infinity symbol at the base of the spine. So all of this was delivered before going to Sedona. So when we arrived in Sedona, it was quite miraculous. Uh, I just made this little diagram to explain this. We met with the Hopi people and the Hopi people talked about the back door as Honanki and the front door as Palatki. Now, these, it was raining so much the day we arrived. It even started to snow. And the back door and the front door, they are about, I would say, maybe at least an hour, you know, four-wheel drive in the mud. So we had to drive through roads that, that were not even roads. You know, you just had to drive through the mud. It was really crazy, but we did it. So Marza told me that I'm going to be at the front door and Matthias was going to be at the front door. So I was at the back door, sorry, back door, and he was going to be at the front door. So they split us in two halves. And so um, I was driving to the back door and just praying that we can make it through the mud because it was really not easy. So um, we ended up at the back door and we started to meditate. And then the people at the front door, you know, it was so far away from each other, you couldn't see anything. But um, what we saw was this this is where the back door is and what happened as we started to meditate was pretty incredible i don't think i have a picture here but again i put it in the photos it is um a rainbow started to rise from this mountain and that was quite incredible it would just be rainbow light i actually want to see if i have the picture here because i would love for you to see it but i forgot to put it in the slides let me quickly look, if you don't mind. It just was so magical. I'm going to look in a moment. I cannot find it right now. But as we were meditating, uh, and I was just doing what I knew from the Hopi people to do, I was following exactly the instructions. I was just, you know, activating the fire within the spine, fixing what I would call the back door with the two fixes that I was told that we could do. Then the rainbow just started to rise from this rock here at the back door. And I started to receive uh, transmissions that were like super clear and loud in the head. And this is what I think is the most important part of today's transmission. I just wanted to put it into context. So as we were meditating there, you know, it was 
pouring, it was snowing, it was so uncomfortable. I took my shoes off because that's what we do, right? When we want to connect with the earth. And I wanted to show you also the front door. So Serena, I don't know if she's here on the call. She sent me what Matthias posted on Instagram from the front door. So I'll play it. Here in different places. But again, this is the solar calendar. You could see the markings. Um, if you watch the Zoom video, you will see this. I put the filter on for it. So you'll see the layers after layers after layers. Um, it looks like Casper the ghost, not. This is the threshold garden. So here we are talking about the energy and layers of time. And we're, we've got a threshold. So yeah, Romina, thank you. You posted the picture of the rainbow rising. That's amazing because that's what happened. Suddenly, as we were meditating, you know, the rainbow appeared in front of the rock, the back door. And so I was receiving so much information at the back door as this was liberated. It was pretty incredible. So again, you know, everybody wanted to be at the front door, but I thought, you know, I knew that it's the back door that actually holds the key. And so the back door had to defrost the energy, had to liberate the energy, and it had to connect the infinity symbol between the front and the back. And it had to be down through the fire at the base of the spine, the true burning volcano that Divine Mother has been speaking about for so long. It's really incredible. And so this is what I received. And I would say this is the really breakthrough information of what happened on the 2nd of February. As I was standing there with my you know, feet on the ground and facing the portal, I could see that all life originated as this beautiful, harmonious frequencies of oneness. And everything was flowing like the rainbow serpent as one body through cosmos of creation. I could see it as tones i could see it as frequencies i was seeing this like non-stop you know the third eye open in the portal also it was by design so everything originally was harmonious and was all as one even though you see in the musical uh scale right we have different notes we have different frequencies but they even though they are different they all behave as one they understand that beyond this is just oneness that holds, you know, the rainbow together, the rainbow creation, the rainbow children, the rainbow people. We are all, you know, this is just the mystery is so big about the rainbow body. Everything was one and yet unique, but it was all connected into oneness. Then I could see that something happened within creation and that one frequency started to go astray. That one frequency, and I have it here, you know, I was trying to des describe this as much as I could. One frequency separated itself, but not completely. It still stayed attached, but went astray. And it started to wander away from the rest of the frequencies. And it created, in a way, what we would call a frequency of the adversary. We have many different names for the adversary. We even have heard some very big names like Satan. But again, that's just to give it some kind of names and explain what happened. I could see how this frequency, even though it originated in oneness, now felt separate. And yet it was not completely separate, but it felt and perceived itself as the other, the one against and then it turned back and looked at the rest of life and said, let me attack it. Let me be against it. Let me go and fight it. And so life started to actually, in a way, be against life itself. But just that one frequency that originally was one with all. I could see it clearly. I'm not a musician, so it was, you know, it was interesting. I was shown everything in musical terms. So then I, it was the origin of disharmony. It was the origin of what today we would call evil, because one frequency simply felt not one with the rest. So I was told that this created disconnect, dis dissonance, disharmony. And going back, to, and I mean, this is, you know, when you think about when this happened, 
things within cosmos are frequencies. We are talking about certain laws of physics. So let's say when there is creation that happens, you know, this goes back to the story of Sophia and the Gnostic tradition, how Sophia accidentally creates the adversary, right? And they had a different name for it. They called it like archons, right? So it's going back to what happened. So I want to explain this a little bit from the yogic um, perspective. How from Ishvara, the ultimate divine source, we have the emanation, and you could say from Father God, we have the emanation of Maha Prakriti, which is the great mother, the great mother nature. We call her cosmic mother nature. But from her, through the laws of physics within cosmos, we have the emanation of two very different frequencies. One is the pure nature, and one is the impure nature that in Christianity would be called Satan. So, so interesting, you know. Again, if you go to the Gnostic tradition, I think they have such a wonderful explanation of all of this. But it was interesting how this leads then to that impure nature being in a way against the rest of life. As we were standing in this portal, I was clearly shown that the second of the second this year is the end of this kind of, I would even call it accidental creation of a frequency that goes against life and that it is the reunification of all frequencies back into the original harmony and oneness of all life and that something so huge is being in a way brought back into oneness and harmony where all frequencies know that they are unique and yet they work together now this was huge because I went back to what the Hopi people showed me before I went to Sedona. And they said it was going to be the infinity symbol that will restore the flow between these two portals. Harmonic reset. Absolutely. And so it was a great success. Matthias also posted about it, for what he experienced at the, um, the front door. And he spoke about it in terms of also time and space reality and how time and space is being rep repaired in a way. So, you know, this is something so ancient. It's really hard to put it into perspective. So the next day was absolutely incredible. Mm, we had a Hopi uh, woman with us and her husband who were able to take us as guests into places again where no one gets to go we were not allowed to have phones with us most of the time so for example we were not allowed to take any pictures most of the time but we were allowed to take pictures once we got into this um, original canyon of creation so the Hopi people have incredible creation stories of course and I think we need to pay attention to these incredible stories because they clearly describe the birth of the first world second world third world fourth world and how we are ascending into the fifth world if we make the right choices. And so um, they believe that they have been part of creation ever since life was brought to the earth. Now, I was so fascinated because I've shared a lot of my own memories. So they believe that the first portal that appeared in the atmosphere of planet earth is the one above Tibet. Now, I shared this many times because I remember coming through the portal just like a flower, again, when you see the flowering of consciousness in the atmosphere of the earth, and it's not really even the atmosphere, it's so much more like you would say the light body of the earth. When she first showed us in cosmos that she was ready to receive life, it happened in the portal in the Himalayas. Now, the Hopi people also believe that that's how they came here. And so... Their creation stories go back to the creation of life on planet Earth. So they consider themselves to be the people of the Earth that came from the stars. And so here in this amazing canyon, they go there to meditate, to receive instructions from what they call Tewa. Now, again, I was so blown away because, you know, I remembered that we used to call our creator Tewa. And so these days in the language of the Hopi, they speak the Tewa language. And Tewa means the solar light, the sun, the creator, 
expressed as the great spirit through the sun. So that's amazing. So we were asked to go into this canyon where you can see so many. This is the lady who was guiding us and she was taking us to all these places where you have these incredible, uh, you know, uh, petroglyphs. And many of them are showing all the different star beings and uh, even the kachinas. So we were asked to meditate to receive again more information about what is to come and happen on planet Earth. Now, this was really interesting. Matthias was receiving information and he shared it again on his Instagram. But I wanted to take us uh, to this picture, which I have shared in the past. And that was about, you know, again, I just quickly make these drawings whenever I receive the information. It was about the true nature of time and how time is caught up in a natural flow on planet Earth, but also around the Earth and how it disconnects us from the fifth dimensional time and actual timelessness. And so I made this picture in Ohio when I first was able to see this, that time here on Earth is unnatural and it creates a wrinkle in time. Now there is a book and a movie called The Wrinkle in Time. And in the movie, the answer to fixing the wrinkle in time is love. Now, I believe that is exactly what we are doing here. As we fall in love again, we start perceiving more and more timelessness. And we realize that we live in an unnatural time-space reality. And that our true divine reality doesn't have the time we have here. And so I was also shown how during the solstice, whether it is summer solstice or winter solstice, the earth suddenly moves into a position where we can experience timelessness, where the unnatural time ceases to exist for a moment in time, which is the solstice, summer and winter, and we are able to actually experience our ascension. So the native people, of course, knew this, and they would do something quite specific when it came to solstice. They would fast during the solstice moments, and that would be the day before, the day of, and the day after, so that they are not even trapped in any kind of illusion, because the original design of the human being, of course, is very different from what we have here today. And then they would work with this energy that opens up around the earth, that allows us to experience fifth dimensional time and timelessness. So Matthias, uh, he received exactly the same and he was told the same thing that we do need to fix and repair actually this artificial time that we have. One of the ways to do it, to start doing it is to align more and more with the true time, the time of nature, the time that is cyclical, it is not linear. It is the time of the sunrise. It is the time of the sunset. It is the time of the eclipses. It is the time of solstices. It is the time of equinoxes. And then by aligning with this time, we might let go more and more of this artificial time that tells us, you know, to be on schedule, to be, you know, on time in certain ways, which again is not exactly the time of nature, of the way that nature flows. So let me see what else we've got here. What is important? if any of this actually all right i'm just going to quickly go through all the slides actually just so that we can review let me just go deeper than asking what it is if i forgot anything from oh yeah so when we went to these beautiful sites with the hopi people they were speaking about the necessity of having this was the lady here she was wonderful of having a clean heart and that this discordant frequency is looking to enter human beings and to make their hearts impure, to make their hearts not compassionate, not caring, in a way you would say selfish. And so once again, it was all about Divine Mother wanting us to be caring the Hopi society for example is matriarchal and it is a very balanced matriarchal society and so women are considered to be leaders and they lead through love and consciousness and the men of course support them and so it was all about also letting go right uh, of 
all the systems they spoke about how all the systems in this world have to be transformed to be based in the purity of heart the purity of heart that is caring that is grateful for example you know again the hopi people told us you know how for them the earth is a gift and it was given to us to experience our existence and so they live in gratitude for the earth every single day they also live in gratitude for the sun every day and so it's about restoring our connection with the earth through love every day in great gratitude because to them you know um, our civilization became insane and the insanity came from not considering the great value and the gift of the earth and not giving great thanks to our son for the gift of life that we receive every day as we could not exist without the solar light because solar light is not only physical but it's also spiritual so the solar light and the planetary energy are absolutely essential to the Hopi people for example and so the way that we are invited to move forward is to move back into resonance resonance with the rest of your life which also means the rest of cosmos and to see the great gift of the earth and the sun every day to some people it seems very primitive i spoke to, to some people in this lifetime that they told me it was so primitive to even connect to the earth or connect to the sun and that you know our ancient people did it because it was a primitive religion but actually it is the most i would say a reasonable way to connect with the great spirit to connect with the creator because we are here in these bodies to experience creation to participate in creation and to be the love of god to be the heart of god to be the mind of god to be the hands of god to be the words of god you know all of it and so imagine with me what it's like if you had children and you would give them a great gift you would give them an entire planet bountiful planet where they could go and where they could go and experience the awesomeness of creation and you would give them a sun as a small kind of reminder of source and the sun would be conscious the planet would be conscious and both would be like divine mother and divine father kind of representing the energy of mother father and then giving these children everything that they need so that they can actually be creator beings but suddenly they would forget about the value of these gifts and instead they would just start running around very busy trying to just make money buy things and put them into the belly of the earth without any really um, honor or recognition for the earth and for the sun so you would say that creates insanity and so in a way, that's what happened on planet Earth, of course. It all became a little too insane and out of balance. But once again, the 2nd of the 2nd, February 2nd, brought this harmonization through these portals in Sedona. So if you go to Sedona, and it's ideally not a rainy day, <laughs> I highly recommend not driving to these portals uh, when it's raining or muddy. But you can actually look it up. These are actually UNESCO sites. Honanki and Palatki and they are really hidden you know um, it's you have to drive quite a bit to get those but if you have a four-wheel drive you can actually get there so I think in the summer it must be dusty instead of muddy so it must be possible to get to these places and so I had several experiences with the Hopi people in this lifetime and one of them took me actually all the way to the new earth. And we all speak about, you know, the new earth. What is the new earth? Does it exist? Do people live there already? Now, it's so fascinating that for hundreds of years, as far as we know, the Hopi people actually knew of the new earth. And not only did they know of it, they firmly believed that for example you know through colonization when they lost their 
physical life here on this planet, that they would not come back onto this planet, but they went straight to the new earth. And then the new earth was simply um, a higher version of this earth. Now, when I met with the Hopi people one day and I was taken onto the new earth, it was so many different native tribes already residing on the new earth. And the new earth itself had these incredible landscapes that also we see here on this planet. But I ended up in the landscape that we call Sedona. Sedona obviously is a name that was given to this beautiful portal by white people. And so Sedona is such a gorgeous, really heart chakra almost to me, but it opens heart. Everybody that I know when they come to Sedona, their heart opens up immediately because it's just too beautiful. And it is the beauty of the earth. It is the beauty of nature that opens hearts. Isn't that amazing? And so um, on the new earth, how reality works on the new earth is pretty miraculous. And we are all actually, I'm sure, really interested in how this works, but we can already start living like this here. It requires that clean heart. That means that none of that distorted frequency of the adverse adversary can be in our hearts. That means pure, selfless heart, giving heart, loving heart without anything else. And so with this pure heart, when we enter these portals to the new earth, this heart actually then becomes an amazing um, equipment within us that allows us to constantly make good decisions. The heart, when it's pure, starts to perceive life as information that comes as emanation of what we would call nature. So going back to nature. When nature emanates into pure nature, it emanates also through what we would call Christ consciousness, which is all love. And again, we move beyond, you know, Christ being Jesus, because that's just one of the expressions of Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness is available to all of us to become Christed beings of the rainbow body. The rainbow body is an expression of our Christ nature. When we activate our pure nature, our pure heart, and we become just aligned with that frequency, then we activate our rainbow body our frequency changes, our vibration changes, and we start perceiving higher and higher realms all the way to what we call Ishvara. So it's about truly aligning with the purity of our hearts. Now, the pure heart then doesn't have a dissonance. No longer is there any dissonant frequency. And so the pure heart is able to actually hear what nature is emanating, not only through her expression as the nature that we have on this planet, but also as what we call the solar nature. And then all of nature becomes the book of life. Here in this world, we have some books that are, have been important to humanity, like the Bible. But we want to move beyond that. We want to go to the book of life that nature emanates to us. Purification of the heart. How do we become all love? It is up to us to be constantly choosing, right? Which frequency we want to express and body. We have been living in this world where we identified so much with the mind that was a liar. Very often the mind is a liar. It's a deceiver. And so our true mind is the, actually the knowing of the heart. The heart is the one who knows. So when the heart in these higher realms receives information from the book of life that surrounds us in terms of cosmic consciousness, we only make decisions that lead to the expansion of creation through love. So all of this unfolded here on the second of the second. It's pretty incredible. And the way that, you know, I always experience these things in these higher realms, I say, you know, it takes time to settle into this world. All of this comes as information 
into our feet, into our hearts, into our crowns, into our consciousness, and it makes us whole again. It unifies the beautiful rainbow body within us, the flow of the mother, the flow of the father. So we have about five minutes before we close the call. And so I want to go to something that Yogananda taught us. And this is very important for all of us as we move through this ascension process. And that is we have to remember that we have we are beings who are being projected into this world as little characters. But the character already has a lot of written script. A lot has been already determined by our souls. And our souls are much, 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 much larger beings. They are so large that they are, it's incomprehensible. I always compare it to a sea. So like Mediterranean Sea, you can think of a sea. It is kind of defined body of water that is not as big as the ocean. And it is vast and it has so many waves, so many waves within the sea. And each wave is a lifetime. And it is not your lifetime, it is the lifetime that your soul brought into existence. These lifetimes still exist within the soul. And so all the waves are like the coming and going, coming and going, and we are just one of the waves. Beyond the soul is the spirit. The spirit fuels the soul's dreaming. The soul is what we could call also our mother. And then we have the father as the spirit, but we are beings that are so complex. And so our self-realization is realizing that this little character here is not as real as we think. And that to be able to actually gain self-realization, we have to get to know the sea of our soul, also to liberate the soul from what we call the karmic patterns, and then to allow the soul to reunite with the spirit. So this is the part of the work that we do here with the Green Tara calls. I remember coming into this world from a planet that actually exploded through what I would call, I can compare it to like a nuclear explosion. Now, Matthias spoke about, I spoke to him about this and he said that actually several planets like this existed within, you know, cosmic creation that exploded. And so my life has been about remembering what unconsciousness can do, how beings can be so unconscious that they can actually create such a disharmony that they could create war, which is completely against the oneness of our life. And so that was the beginning of my life in this world, constantly remembering as a child how painful it is when a planet is destroyed and how then we have to go and go to other planets and to be the peace bringers, to be the harmony bringers, to kind of come from the future, which again is something so puzzling, but we do come from the future and we come into past worlds. This is a past world. And then we try to do our best and we do our best so that as the planet keeps evolving with the humanity evolving, humanity takes different timelines different pathways and so this did happen and again you know i like to get a little bit of confirmation when i see all of these things so matthias confirmed all of this as well that you know um many of us came from the future to be able to make a difference in the past so that the future actually is different too and so I'm going to close with a video that I made uh, again in 2020. Again, you know, I hired someone to speak it, but it was about the memories of how we came here from these future worlds that did not really end up in a good place to make a difference here where it matters. Because the earth is actually super, super important to creation. And the earth to me, the way the Divine Mother explained it is truly like a mother, mother that contains such a bounty, bounty of forms, bounty of expression of life. And so some people call it the library. That's a, one way to describe it. Some people call it the mother cell. And so the earth is very important. And so it is important that you and me and all our children and grandchildren and all our friends and families realize the importance of actually this beautiful planet as she expresses 
the creativity of our cosmic mother nature. And so um, our next event, and I'm going to play this short video, it's only three minutes. Our next event, just so that you know, I'll put it on the website, will be on Saturday, the 17th of February. And we will continue with these teachings and self-realization. Oh, sorry. I totally made a mistake. Don't worry about it. I made a mistake. It's not going to be on the 17th. Uh, I will post it on the website. It's going to be the week after that. So, but here is the video of remembering coming from the future. I am a child from the stars. I came from elsewhere to the breathtaking planet Earth. She moves my human heart now. I am in love with Mother Earth as much as you are. I am grateful for her love and generosity. She rescued me from out of space. I am a star child, just like you may be. My people came from the stars. Some came from the Pleiades, some from Sirius, others from Arcturus, Andromeda, or Mars. We come to Mother Earth for many reasons. Many of us are here to remind humanity to heal and love their mother planet. Our planetary homes were so precious to us. My soul family lost our home planet in a horrendous explosion. Let us protect Mother Earth from all suffering. You are here to hold your frequency high and clear. Be solid in your radiance. The transition is here, 2020. Nothing will remain unchanged. We are here in our human bodies. So many of us have forgotten, but some remain very connected to the knowledge of our origin. I am certain I'm speaking to those who remember. Activate your fullness. Remember, the knowledge is in our DNA. It lays dormant in ourselves. The key is in our true memory. The key is in our DNA. We are being called to our true service, to serve Mother Earth as all changes, as all rises, as all evolves radically. We are here to serve the planetary ascension. She is not the only one rising. Many other planets will connect to her in the formation of the cosmic dragon of rainbow light. The cosmic rainbow serpent will lift all into higher dimensions of light and consciousness. We are not alone. Humanity has never been alone. We are assisted in unimaginable ways. 2020, the age of Aquarius is here. The fifth world is opening its gates. We are rising. Our cells are being changed from within. What is next, you may ask? Next is the new. Next is more freedom. Humanity is no longer enslaved. Our physical, emotional, mental, and etheric bodies are being set free. Finally. I know it is not easy or comfortable to rethink your reality. Reality sticks. That is the problem with a dream. As long as we believe in a dream, we affirm it. We materialize it. We make it happen. As many say, awaken from the dream. You have the power to create a whole new dream now. The new earth. The great purifier is working through our physical cells now. There is so much confusion about the great purifier out there in the human world. May my words be heard and understood. The great purifier works intentionally on the cellular level. It serves us well. All is well. All is very well. All is evolving as it should. All is perfectly well. We are not alone. We have never been alone. We are shedding the veil of illusion to see our fantastic truth.